Good morning, everybody. The special uh, Mackinac Bridge Authority will be called to order now. Today's date is May 18th, 2021. The purpose of the special meeting this morning is to discuss the bridge walk for 2021. Kim, if you'd be kind enough to call the roll, please. And please, uh, members, if you would mention your location when you answer the roll call. All right, Chairman Gleason. Escanaba, Michigan. Vice Chair Trahey. President, President from Lansing, Michigan. Director Ajaba. Here, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Member Steidel. Here, South Lyon, Michigan. Member Kinley. Here, Lansing, Michigan. Member Milliken. Present, Ann Arbor, Michigan. <laughs> Member Cheeseman. Here, St. Ignace, Michigan. Treasurer Eubanks. Uh, present from East Lansing, Michigan. And Council Gleason. Present from Hamlin Township, Eden County. Thank you, Kim. Board members, we have a uh, number one item on the agenda, which is the approval of the agenda. Mm. What's your pleasure? I'll move approval of the agenda. I'll second. It's been moved and supported that the agenda be approved as presented. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, uh, Kim, if you would call the roll, please, on that. Chairman Gleason? Yes. Vice Chair Trahey? Yes. Director Ajaba? Yes. Member Steidel? Yes. Member Kinley? Yes. Member Milliken? Yes. Member Cheeseman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Under public comment, uh, I just want to note for the record that we have already read and received 50 uh, comments pertaining to <laughs> the bridge walk for 2021 uh, that will be entered into the record. And at this time, I'd like to call on James Lake if he would read the additional eight comments that we would received since the last 50 come in. So at this point, James, would you read the additional eight comments? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, it, it appeared uh, that, that we received about 10 more comments at this point, uh, but I will read them until uh, till the end. Um, comment 51, uh, that form came in blank. Uh, the next comment was from Jacob Sterling. Please keep the bridge walk going this year. It's in fresh air. I want to come and walk it this year as a summer fitness goal. From Nikki Kalama, I greatly hope that the bridge walk happens this year. From Matthew Van Wyk, please allow the bridge walk. My wife and I are having a girl this coming July, and we're looking forward to walking the bridge with her. My wife has walked the bridge every year that it was held, and she wants to keep that tradition going with our children. Bring on the bridge walk. From Krista Owens, really looking forward to the bridge walk this year. Been two years for me to be on vacation, waiting to see outcome of the vote. Got my COVID shots and face mask for event. So many memories and meeting other people. Really like for event to happen. Thank you. Christopher Ellsworth. I'd like to, or I'd love to have the bridge walk this year. It's something my family and I have looked forward to for almost 15 years now. And you never know when your last time going in a big group will be. Please let our family tradition continue. Thanks, Chris. From Lisa. Yes to the walk this year. From Lori Vazina, the mask mandate and social distance rules will be dropped. Let's bring back the walk. From Michelle Cromwell, it's a tradition and it was missed last year. And while I understand the circumstances around last year's cancellation, this year does not have the same implications and should go on as planned. It's outside, and if you are uncomfortable with all the people or have health concerns, then you do not have to participate. From Wendy Kocher, 
With what I know at this point, I think the walk should go as scheduled. My concern is not that this year's walk is canceled. It is that the walk becomes a thing of the past. I would be sad if that were to happen. <clears throat> From Carol Ellis, this event is so important and such a wonderful tradition. Please keep it going. I signed up for the run just in case you decide to have the event. And we missed our time in Mackinac City and on the island so much last year. I'm happy to do absolutely anything, including run wearing a mask, to get to participate. Thank you for everything you do as the Bridge Authority. Uh, Form 62 is also blank. Uh, that appears to be the end of the public comments we've received to this point, Mr. Chair. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. Uh, we'll move right on to new business. And Kim, uh, you have put together a presentation for us. Would you take the time now to go through that, please? Certainly. Um, we're going to revisit some of the walk history. Uh, some of these things are items you saw at last year's uh, special meeting about bridge walk. Um, so the bridge walk has been going on every year since 58, except, of course, for last uh, year's walk. And the last walk we did have in 2019, we had 30,000 walkers. So that's a typical year. We have had more, we have had less, but 30,000 is a good uh, number to use for thinking about how many people would be uh, participating. Um, some recent developments uh, recommended by Department of Homeland Security and the Michigan State Police, we started closing the bridge to traffic during the walk in 2017. And then also at recommendation of the state police and for some efficiencies, we eliminated busing uh, on the walk in 2018. And then we implemented a U-turn scheme so that we could make sure we didn't leave people behind and everybody that wanted to participate could in 2018. So people could walk the bridge up to um, as much as they wanted or as little as they wanted to. And then we added the state troopers, the Michigan State Police troopers, for security and crowd control um, instead of the National Guard uh, uh, unit that we used to have for that uh, work. And they uh, anticipate that they use over 260 troopers um, during the event and for planning. And this slide shows a list of some of the other law enforcement agencies that are on board for the planning and the implementation of the walk. And so you can see it um, is quite a list there from police departments, fire departments, EMS, and uh, Coast Guard, FBI, Border Patrol, all kinds of law enforcement is involved in making the bridge walk a success and keeping it safe. These pictures are ones that you've seen before. Um, it shows what the walk was like in uh, a typical year. And so the upper left shows the crowd leaving St. Ignace and uh, using the outside lane there. During the U-turn scheme, the outside lane is used for walkers. The inside two lanes are used for emergency vehicles only. So that is what the crowd looks like in St. Ignace. And similarly, it looks uh, like the picture on the upper right, leaving uh, the Mackinac City and uh, heading north in that outside lane. In the lower uh, left, you can see what 30,000 people look like when they're out on the bridge. Um, and as I said, those two inner lanes are for emergency vehicles. So every 20 minutes or so when the emergency vehicles are coming through, the people squeeze into the outer lane and continue their walk. And then the, uh, the lower right shows the crowd at center span where um, they tend to congregate and, and take, a, take a break and um, mingle around there. And so um, I just wanted you to see, you know, the um, magnitude of the crowd that we're talking about and how they interact. They each go at their own pace. They're, they're passing each other. They're stopping. They're, they're doing all kinds of things. And so very hard to, to even suggest that we could do any social distancing for that crowd. Okay, so we're going to look at the plan that's in effect right now, the My Back to Normal plan. And um, this is a graphic that was put out uh, when that plan was rolled out, showing that there's steps uh, to go through 
uh, in getting back to normal. And the steps are based on the percentage of Michiganders above the age of 16 that have received their first dose of vaccination. And so we are actually, uh, we've moved up in the steps here to this first step. We passed the 55% mark and we're in that 14 day extension there. So by May 24th, we'll have been fully in step one, 55% plus 14 days. The next uh, slide actually shows in words what these, these uh, steps actually mean. So uh, 55% uh, in-person work will be allowed. So the remote work uh, will go away for some businesses and people will be allowed to allowed to come back to work uh, in person. Um, you can see the other percentages, 60, 65. Uh, it means that some things are increasing, capacities, um, sports stadiums and uh, restaurants and bars, that kind of thing. But when you get down to the 70% of Michiganders, um, is where uh, the all the good stuff happens. And so the, the gatherings and face mask order will be changed such that it will be lifted and there won't be any broad mitigation me measures um, against COVID at that time. And so that would be a time where we could hold an event with 30,000 people um, on the bridge. So that's what we are aiming for. This next slide uh, shows a graphic. I wanted to show, you know, uh, uh, kind of zoom out and zoom in as to where we are in the country and where we are in our state. And so this map shows the uh, graphic representation of all the states in the United States. And I was going to take this out, but um, as you know, the, um, the slide I shared with you about a week ago showed Michigan as the only state in the red, which means that we had 25, we had more than 25 daily new cases per 100,000 population. And so we just came out of the red into the orange. And then um, as of yesterday, I just wanted to mention Alabama came into the red. And when we looked back a week ago, they were in the yellow. So they actually bounced into the red. And I don't know if that was a backlog of data or what it was, but I guess my point there is we hope these are all going from red to orange to yellow to green, but um, you know, we've, we've seen states that go back upwards in, in the chart there too. Um, looking at Michigan itself, this is from the COVID-19 mapping website. And this graph shows the whole COVID experience from the very beginning to where we are now. Um, you can see I, I think you might see my cursor, the um, the relatively small bump at the beginning, which we all, when we were experiencing it, thought it was a, a large bump. But um, as we got into the holiday season, we did have a, a, a very big um, bump in COVID cases. And then just recently, we're coming down from another very big bump in COVID cases. And if you look back at when we had our special meeting last year in May to discuss the bridge walk, we were down around a thousand uh, cases, daily cases, and now we're somewhere around 2,000 cases and on the decline, which is nice, we're on the decline. So that just shows our whole COVID experience in one, in one chart. Um, this is from the COVID-19 vaccine dashboard and they show the percentage that we are at for 16 plus residents with their first dose. And this data is from as of the 17th of May. And so as of the 17th of May, we are at 56.3%. Um, and we're waiting, uh, as I said, for those two weeks uh, since we achieved 55 and that will be May 24th. Um, I'll point out that this, this dashboard here includes the out-of-state people that got their vaccines in Florida or other states and um, but are really Michigan residents. So those have been included in this group. And then uh, Bureau of Prisons and Department of Defense Veterans Affairs uh, have been included in here where they might not, they're not included in some of the data that's below this chart on the website. But you'll see where I've taken that into account. So 56.3%, remember that number.
This is one of the charts that's below the, um, the, the dashboard that I just showed you. So this um, table here, it shows the weekly vaccines that were administered. Each week is a separate bar. The dark green bars are the first doses. The light green bars are the, the second doses. And then the numbers on top of the graph are the total doses for each week. So if we zoom in on the end of the chart, which we're most interested in, um, when you're on the website and you hover over the over the different areas, it shows you what the first doses are. And so I've done that and I've written the first doses down here in yellow for you to see. So that is how our weekly doses, our weekly um, rate of first doses has been progressing. And so I'll comment on this last week here, the 51,000. Um, as I shared with you um, earlier, the website didn't update yesterday at 3 o'clock like it was supposed to, and they had a notice on there that they are updating it today. And so I expect that update to be 3 o'clock today. So these numbers here, this 51,000 is of as, as of May 14th. Um, and so I would expect that to go up after they post this afternoon. I wouldn't... I, don't believe it'll go up as high as this, but it will go up. Um, so I'm sorry I can't present that, but that data is just not on that website. Um, these weekly dosage rates play into this next graph. Um, this graph shows when the vaccine started back in December and how the, um, the first dose rate and the second dose rate are progressing. So if we look close at the end of that chart, and I plugged in what the actual dashboard says, 56.3% of Michiganders at the end of the week of 515. Um, and then I projected on some weekly rates, um, what we might think might happen to the weekly rate of first doses. So if we were to think that there was 100,000 doses per week per average over the entire summer, um, that would put us out to be reaching the 70% mark on August 14th, plus the two weeks uh, included. So we would be all done with the 11 weeks plus two at August 14th. If we thought that average of weekly vaccines is going to be more like 80,000, that would put us at 14 weeks plus two, which equals right around the Labor Day mark, September 4th, just before Labor Day. If we were to think that the um, the weekly rate was something less than 80,000 um, down to um, the 50,000 per week, um, that would get us to October 30th. So those are just some examples of projections using the data that's um, on the previous chart showing the weekly vaccine rate. Um, we referred in that first, uh, one of the first slides to the gatherings and face mask order. And so looking at the new order that came out uh, May 14th, uh, posted for May 15th, um, you know, that was in the news recently saying that vaccinated people uh, don't have to wear their mask indoor or outdoor. And that's a general statement there. There were some um, specific rules about that. But in general, if you're vaccinated, you don't need a mask indoor or outdoor. And along with that gathering a face mask order was the capacity uh, limitations at gatherings. And as I took out this portion from the mask order, um, outdoor gatherings are permitted only as followed. Uh, Non-residential venues where 300 or fewer persons are gathered. So that's the rule right now today, 300 or, few, or fewer persons for a gathering. Um, and so we're talking about this now as we did a year ago because we start planning way early for the bridge walk and start having meetings and start ordering supplies and getting lodging together for the troopers and the all the different things that we have to order, busing for the troopers. Uh, so we're, we, we're about to start spending money on the bridge walk. So that's why we are talking about it now. You can see the costs for the 2019 walk um, in there. And then the state police and the bridge authority estimated that the combined cost for those two entities is over a half a million dollars for the 2021 costs. 
And so we're talking about it now because the current order for 300, a gathering of 300, um, we have to get to a place where we could gather 30,000, and that would be step four. So that's why we want to talk about it early enough to see if what we think about the metrics that we have to meet to, to get that gathering together. And that is the end of my presentation. Shorty, I think you're on mute. Okay, here we go. Uh, can you hear me now, Kim? Yes. Members, thank you very much. First of all, Kim, thank you for a very detailed report, uh, very informational. Uh, let me just start by saying, you know, last year uh, vaccines were just almost a dream away and we've come a long way since then. It was encouraging news to hear last Thursday with the restrictions somewhat being uh, reduced through the CDC. Everything seems to be tracking at this point in time that it is quite feasible by September 4th, Labor Day, that we would be in the 70,000, uh, or excuse me, in the 70 percent uh, percentile for vaccines. The purpose of this meeting isn't to uh, say yes or no to the bridge walk at this point, I feel. I, I still think there's time here, as long as it's trending in the right direction, to continue the planning for the 2021 bridge walk. If there's, uh, at this point, I would turn it over to members of the authority for their input on this discussion. Anybody have any questions, comments? I have a question, uh, Shorty. The uh, the costs that we saw that were incurred in 2019, what, what will have happened to them since? What kinds of additional expense might we incur in a bridge walk in 2021? I, I would think, Bill, that those would be very similar. And remember, those costs are at the end of the day on Labor Day. If we start into this for another month or two, and I'm just giving this as an example, that won't be the total cost. If there has to be a cancellation made between now and Labor Day, those costs would be significantly less than what you're seeing there on the screen. Well, for instance, in the case of Governor Whitmer, if she walks the bridge, won't there be additional security costs for that crossing? <clears throat> no, it was, uh, she walked in her first year as governor in 2019. So the, the security was there. Uh, the security will be there regardless of the Perhaps. governor walks or not. I guess I should say it that way. <clears throat> I guess I have a maybe a question. Um, so thanks, Kim and staff and Shorty for calling this meeting and, and appreciate the public comments. I think uh, hearing from people weigh in and a lot of heartfelt comments and and frankly a lot of valiant suggestions for people who would I think still be willing to don a mask simply to do it. Um, so I appreciate that. I don't know. If we were at that um, uh, threshold that we could hold the walk, I don't know legally if we could even require people still to wear masks. It's kind of that to me seems like a favorite, but I still want to acknowledge that a lot of people who really want to walk the mask are willing to do that. And I appreciate that. Um, I don't even want to get into the, that legal question because I don't think it's necessary right now. I guess um, I. <coughs> My question and point, I think, twofold is a little bit to Bill's point. The estimated cost for 2021 we have up here at 505000 um, 
but Kim, you said we're about to start spending money. So we're really, really on the bare front end of the bubble. Um, and to me, to the, to the point Shorty made is we're also on the bubble of if there's not, if we still have a, have a lack of uptake in terms of vaccinations, it's already dropped off a bit. Um, we might not meet that 70% threshold, but I feel like it's, it's premature for us to make that conclusion right now. And I guess I'd be inclined that, um, inclined that we, if we can at all possible delay a decision a few more weeks and just see if more people take, take the vaccine up and do it if we're on track to do that. I guess that's that would be my, when I look at all of the, the data combined that Kim put together, we're so on the bubble, we, we might not be able to make that threshold, but we might. And if we're not, and my, my bigger point is, is if we're really not spending that much money and we can even hold off two, three, four weeks for a decision. I'm open to it. Those are just my thoughts and comments, I guess. It's sort of all wrapped up into one. I'm trying to piece it all together that we're, I just feel like we're really on the bubble. Thank you, Trish. I appreciate your comments. Member uh, Stato. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Shorty. You know, I am, I've been on the board a long time, and uh, I'm, I learned from the past chairman to be pretty protective of uh, people's tolls uh, and what they, uh, you know, they, they give it to us uh, and ask us to be really good stewards of it. Um, but at the same time, I'm also, you know, a lifelong Michigan resident, uh, participated in lots of Michigan history. And uh, I think it is a little too early, I'll, I'll um, agree with both of the comments, all three comments. It's a little too early. Yes, we are gonna start spending money. So if it was a pure fiscal decision, boy, there's you know maybe some possibility it might not go, well, then you'd kind of uh, err on the side of not spending any money. But frankly, uh, I think the amount of money that we would spend or have to forfeit because we make a decision later uh, I think is worth it. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm in support of uh, not making a decision today to not hold it, but to hold off a little longer, recognizing that we will start to spend some money. Treasurer Eubanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So a question for Kim. Last year, you know, we looked at this in the context of um, you know, obviously the public health crisis and your crisis that you're having in terms of the volumes of tolls on the bridge and what that kind of means to the volume, um, to your budget overall. And we kind of took a two-part decision in saying, you know, I mean, it was, we had a public health issue, but we also had a budgetary issue. And I know your volumes are still down. Do you have a sense of even, you know, I mean, regardless of if you're going to spend or not, I mean, assuming the board moved ahead, is this event affordable this year without sacrificing some of the important capital and infrastructure investments, I know that we're on the docket for this year. That's a good question. Yes, um, it's affordable and there'll be no sacrifice to our work or our projects or anything like that, any of the maintenance that goes on on the bridge. Um, our early traffic this year was down, but it's picking up. And I think as the vaccines go up, our traffic's going to just rise along right with it. And so I believe we're, we're going to see some increases in traffic from, from what we had in 2019 for this summer. So we're gearing up for that, and I, I think we're we're in good shape. Thank you, Treasurer. Any other comments? The Detroit Free Press yesterday reported that they're forecasting record Michigan tourism this summer, so that uh, boost that Kim was referencing may well come to pass. Thank you, Bill. Director Ajabal. Uh Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everybody. I, I think I um, I echoed the sentiment of uh, um, 
Director Steidel as well, that we continue with the planning process uh, with the hope that we will hold it unless there's a major outbreak. And my, the, the way I look at the, the Michigan Policy Conference is still so far um, heading towards happening. I believe that uh, right now about a week, scheduled for about a week apart. Um, I, I think with all the sentiment we're hearing out there from the public about wanting to continue this tradition, um, it, it, it's probably not a bad thing to hold off another month or two to see how things are going with, with vaccination and then we can make a decision then. I, I, I don't think we will spend substantial amount of money between now and then and uh, that, that will be well watered if we decide to, to move forward with it. Thank you, Director. Yeah, if I could just um, maybe explore upon Kim and the staff, if we're spending the money, just keep us tightly in the loop so we know what we're spending until we can defer this decision. Because people really have to plan, just like we're doing the planning stages on our end. Families have to book their places. They're planning, you know, these big vacations and looking forward to it after just a year of complete, um, you know, chaos. So. Um, I, I definitely support the planning effort, investing the money in the short term, as long as we can really track it, you know, with you and, and Cami really tracking the expenditures and then reevaluating this because, you know, I love your projections, Kim, you know, getting out there. I loved the, the different looks. I, I'm not sure, um, you know, where it's going to go. Like Trisha said, we're on a bubble. We're, we're all doing our best to guess and we're all so hopeful, which is great. And I think this, you know, this next step to anticipate the bridge walk is giving people hope. And that's really important. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amy. Director, or excuse me, uh, Member Saito, did you have another question or comment? <sighs> Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments, questions, concerns? I have a question. Please, Carolyn. Um, the the total estimated 2021 cost combined is $505,000, which includes MBA and MSP. And being that this is my first year, I would like to know, is all of are all of those costs paid for by the Mackinac Bridge Authority? Do we pay for the MSP expenses? We pay um, 150000 for crowd control for MSP. They pay the rest of that. So like up above where it showed the 2019 costs, you'll see a split there. And so part of our costs in that 2019 were the 150000 for crowd control for MSP. Okay. The other part is the MSP's cost. And so... Um, they estimated a an inflation amount for to get to 2021, as did we. So that's how we reached that number. And we are not responsible for any costs from all of the other entities that were listed, um, local law enforcement and Coast Guard. And do we have to pay any of their costs? That no, we don't pay okay. any of their costs. Um, okay, that's. That was my question. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Mm -hmm. Any further comments, questions, concerns? Go ahead, Bill. Do any of the municipalities in the neighborhood bear any of the costs that are incurred? St. Ignace, Mackinac City? Unfortunately, no. Is that something we could look to in the future? Because being in the local area most of the time and knowing people that commute over the bridge and they're pretty much, well, the people that use the bridge and pay to cross it are paying for the bridge walk. Um, is there any way or any thought to possibly charging uh, the people that want to come and walk it, a nominal fee and or getting the local communities to step up and contribute? Um, well, that would be uh, something that the board would have to take specific action on. 
I, I think that might be a good discussion in the future. Okay. Uh, not that I don't think that's important, Caroline. I just think that the, today's agenda was for the sole purpose of the bridge walk itself. I you know, our cost is part of the discussion, but I don't know if I want to get into uh, uh, the discussion about uh, charging municipalities or chamber of commerce or individual walkers themselves. If there's no objection, then we'll just let that be. I understand. Thanks. Thank you. Did you have any other comments, Caroline? Uh, no. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other comments, questions? Go ahead, Bill. One more, please. Uh, back to normal uh, uh, framework that we've been looking at is state of Michigan. And we're assuming that uh, that's by executive order and that's going to stay in place. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And yes. then we got CDC on the other hand, um, uh, performing a little erratically right now. But uh, are any of these metrics that we're focusing on this, the step four that we want to uh, to get to, is that going to be subject to change by Labor Day? It's it's speculation, but it's uh, it's hard to hard to measure. Well, it's, uh, that's the million dollar question, Bill. It, everything is is projected speculation and it's the, this it's the only type of measuring we have at this point in time is is looking at those matrix. And uh, Kim, did you have anything to add to that? Well, yeah, um, I would you saw all the data I presented. And so the back to normal uh, plan is very driven by the metrics and so it's easy to look at the numbers and try to make a projection but then there's things like this CDC announcement that came in last Thursday and swooped down and 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 put a, a different requirement on us that opened things up uh, in a good way and so that is impossible to predict whether those things are going to come um, down on us and change change the way we're thinking so um, as much as we can look at that data, the other things that that pop out of the seem to pop out of the sky, I, I can't predict any of that kind of thing. I just have one more comment. I assume that the there's a way to analyze and look at the spending from past years and see where in this process we spend how much. I realize the five hundred and five is at the end of the day if the if the walk occurs, but um I wouldn't think it would be too difficult to put together a timeline and what percentage of this budget is spent at which time to make give us a little bit more um, information to make a fiscally responsible decision at a certain time. Yeah, we can look at that. Um, the you know, I, I can do that for sure for the bridge authority, but I'll be relying on others for the state police for that other chunk of money in there. Um, so I can work on something like that. I just wondered when the when the biggest chunk, when we spend the most money, and when it might we might have a cost benefit analysis at a certain point where we have to say okay, yay or nay. That's mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Caroline. Mr. Chairman, I would add, Kim, Kim, as you put that together, it might be helpful to the new board members to just know the history of costs uh, for the bridge walk. If you remember 2017, very large discussion about that because the costs were really escalating. Uh, so I think seeing it in total uh, helps put uh, put it in perspective. Yeah, I'll, I'll put something together. That's a very valid point because uh, to you back her up just five, six, seven years ago, and uh, it wasn't near the cost that it is today. So no question about it. And we've done a lot to trim the cost without jeopardizing the safety of the public. <clears throat> Any other comments? Well, I don't think there's a need for a motion about 
today's discussion because we had already planned that a bridge walk would take place for Labor Day 2021. The only need for a motion would be to cancel the bridge walk 2021. I think it's been a very thorough discussion. Uh, that's my only opinion. Is certainly uh, the members can object if they want the motion the other way. But there's the, the bridge walk itself really has already been scheduled. It's a question of whether or not we should continue the pre-planning and have the walk Labor Day 2021. Any comments? Mr. Chairman, would you want to schedule a tentative meeting for sometime in the future? Well, we have a meeting coming up in July. I would think that that would uh, give us a good feel of where we're at at that particular time. Uh, and there's uh, some object objections to that. We could schedule a meeting between now and then. I, I, I think it's best to hold off until our July meeting, official board meeting, if everybody feels comfortable with it. Or do you want to look at it uh, a month from now, halfway in between? now in July. What's your pleasure? I think it goes back to kind of Carolyn's point about the expenditures and the timeline and when we need to, you know, output some capital to, to whom. Um, that might give us a gauge on it, Kim. So maybe after you put that together, we can we can reassess it to say we might need to move it up to have another special meeting from uh, before our July 9th meeting. Okay. Good idea. Mr. Chairman, I would I would offer that I think we need, uh, the next meeting should be at least a month from now so we see what the trends really are. We can't have it too soon. It's, we're not gonna know anything. <clears throat> okay, very good. Well, Kim, why don't we uh, give you a little time to put the figures together and we'll know more by then. And we can, through uh, just normal communication, call a meeting between uh, now and July and uh, see how we're working there. It may not be a need for a meeting. I don't, I don't know. It's, a, it's really hard to say, but... The expenditures will really start after our July meeting to where they'll really ramp up. So how about if we leave it like that, members, that uh, we'll let Kim put all the facts and figures together. Uh, we'll take a look at it then and see if there's a need for a meeting and call a special meeting now or between now and uh, our July meeting. Everybody comfortable with that? Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any other discussion about the 2021 Labor Day Bridge Walk? I just have one more thing that flew in my mind, Shorty. I'm yeah. sorry it happens. Um, you know, we're we're talking. There's so many changes. I know the authority has been great about communicating about the Bridge Walk. You know, I've seen it on changeable message signs down in Detroit about it. Um, we just have to really be cognizant about communicating to the participants. So they, you know, like I said, everyone's got a plan. They're looking yes. forward to planning this. If things change, they need to know, you know, immediately. So maybe we can kind of hone in a little bit of a, a special communication plan or just make sure we're really um, having having things on the website updated. Um, Trisha, all the all the social media outlets are just on fire. Good point, Amy, and we certainly will. Thank you. Caroline, uh, did you have another comment? No, I'm okay. Good, thanks. Well, if there's no other uh, discussion about the 2021 Bridge Walk, uh, James, James Lake, if I could call on you to read the additional comments that might have come in during the meeting, it would be greatly appreciated. Sure, Mr. Chair, uh, no no additional comments have come in during the meeting. Okay, very good. Thank you, James. 
You're welcome. Well, if there's no further discussion, no further comments to read, a motion would be in order to adjourn. So moved. I'll second that. Been moved and supported to adjourn. Kim, would you call the roll, please? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Chairman Gleason? Yes. Vice Chair Trahe? Yes. Director Ajaba? Yes. Member Steidel? Yes. Member Kinley? Yes. Member Milliken? Yes. Member Cheeseman? Yes. Thank you, Kim. Uh, motion carried. Thank you all for your participation. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.